Howdy y'all. Okay, so I'm making a fast, momentum-based, first-person parkour game called Coastline. There's a ton of new stuff to talk about and changes that have happened to my game, so let's get started. The first level has undergone significant changes and an expansion. Furthermore, it also has a name. Catalyst. Here in this level, I wanted to teach the player all the fun mechanics and fundamentals and abilities in the game in a fun and seamless way. I started out with a short tutorial section, but quickly found it boring and uninspiring. So I greatly expanded the level and reduced the frequency these little tutorial pop-ups show up, but at the same time I wasn't satisfied so I added some more fun ideas, like uh, a wall jumping section, I added some sliding areas, along with some crazy spinny things. And by stretching out my level, I slowly introduced the player to new mechanics while interspersing it with new quirky challenges. I made this once forced, uninspiring tutorial section into a fully fledged, action-packed, enjoyable level. However, while making the level look pretty, I found a part of my level that I want to quickly touch over. For purely cinematic reasons, typically when you're looking out at the ocean, you want it to seemingly go infinitely. However, in my game, if you look at the ocean, you'll notice it'll just stop at a certain point. So, this is what I did in order to fix that. I found the material of my current ocean, and I made a duplicate material of it, and this time I removed the foam effect from it. Then I created a just a simple plane and put the new ocean material on it. Finally, I aligned this new plane with my ocean and had the edges line up, and then I greatly expanded the plane in order to cover a large area. Despite a very straightforward and simple fix, it worked great, and now when you look at the ocean, it actually looks like it goes forever, like a real ocean. Upon finalizing my first level, I set off to work on the second. This is Odium, the second level in the game. And despite the first level being much bigger than before, Odium still exceeds its size just over three and a half times. In this level, I don't take any time explaining mechanics with little tutorial pop-ups or anything. You jump right into the action with these curved walls you need to wall jump around, and these massive ditches you need to leap across. I introduce new mechanics in this level, specific to this level as well. First, there is the red tar. As you can imagine, just by looking at it, you definitely want to avoid it. It will slow you down as soon as you touch it, and it will take away all your momentum. While it won't directly harm you, it will definitely harm your speed and level completion time. The second primary level mechanic are these launcher ramps. These will, as you can imagine, launch the player as soon as they come into contact with it. While the speed they give off applies a static speed to the player, they also do contribute to the player's overall momentum. These become extremely fun when chained together with other player abilities, causing the player to fly through sections. Just another way to live that super fast power fantasy. As you can tell, Odium looks nothing like its predecessor. However, you might notice that this level still follows the same color and art direction as the previous one. The main guiding color principle being that there's a consistent color to direct the player forward, in this case, red, and another color reserved for scenery and background, in this case, green. Looking back at the first level catalyst, I used blues to direct the player forward and pinks for the background. And I will continue to use this strategy in all future levels to help direct the player and just make the levels look cool. But with all that said, Odium is by no means finished yet. It's still going under the final phases of artistic development. There will definitely be a whole bunch more to talk about later, but that's it for now. So, moving on, despite largely focusing on levels over the past few weeks, the player has also received a few updates. 
The first major update is the player's dash. When dashing previously, the player would be launched horizontally in any direction you pointed. The keyword there is horizontally. No matter where you looked, up or down, it would always dash you straight forward. However, I removed these bounds and the player can now dash freely in any direction they're looking. This makes the game just funner overall. Funner? I don't think that's a word. The player is more fun so that when you want to get to high ledges, you can now look up and dash and do that. Or say you're already pretty high up in the air and you want to get down really quickly so you can like slide under a log. Well now you can do that, just look down and dash. Other than that, I did a few small player feedback effects. I have a dust effect that plays when the player hits the ground to further cement that the player is indeed on the ground and they can jump again. And I also added these fun whoosh lines when the player reaches a certain speed. I found them really fun and I always find myself trying to maintain enough speed to keep them on screen. And with that, that's all for the player. I really appreciate for making it this long into my video. It means a whole lot to me. As always, I encourage you if you have any feedback to send it my way. This is a game for people to play and just have fun with, so if you think you would have more fun playing this game with a new feature or some idea, let me know. But with all that said, I hope you're having a great day. Thank you again for watching. Until next time.